Hello, my name is Dean Watson and welcome to this video on roots and exponents. No, not those roots. That's more like it. In this video, we're going to look at changing the form of roots. Not those roots either. Thank you. I'm going to show you that if you have something to the power of a fraction, like we've got here, you can change that into a root and a power. That's right, these two things are exactly the same. Tell me I just blew your mind. It's fine, you don't need to. We're going to learn how to change from one form into the other as easily as your teacher changes from a good mood to a bad mood. The steps for turning a fractional power into a root may interest you only slightly more than sticking your hand into a beehive, but nevertheless, listen up. Firstly, you draw the root sign around the X. And I know you're going to remember that one because who doesn't like drawing? I mean, apart from people who don't like drawing. Secondly, you're going to get the denominator. That's what this D stands for. It doesn't stand for dragons or dungeons or dungeons and dragons. And put that number at the front of the root sign. The final and third step is you take the numerator. That's what this N stands for. Sadly, it doesn't stand for Nicolas Cage. And you put that down as a power to X. And finally, that equals this. So let's violently drill this into your skull with a couple of friendly examples. Here we've got x to the power of 3 over 5, and we need to turn it into a root with a power. So the first step is we draw the root sign. With all this drawing, you'd think it was art class, and you would be mistaken. Once we've done that, we've drawn it around our x term. Then we move the bottom of the fraction, the Dungeons and Dragons denominator, out the front of the root. So therefore, we put this 5, whatever's on the bottom of the fraction, out the front. We leave the top number of the fraction, the Nicolas Cage numerator, the 3, as a power to x. And like asking someone if you're lucky and then having a bird poop on you, you'll get your answer. One more example now, for old times sake. Again, we draw the root sign around our x, like we're in art class, which we most definitely are not. We move the denominator out the front of the root sign, that's the 7 here. Then we move the top of the fraction, the numerator, down to be a power of x. Let's look at one more example. Just kidding, what am I, an example machine? Now, before we finish up this video and give you a chance to write scathing but surprisingly witty remarks in the comments section, I want to look at how you do what we've just done backwards. Now you might be thinking, why do I need to know how to do this backwards? And to that I say, why are you thinking about maths? You're a teenager. You should be thinking about how to get Brooke's attention, even though Brooke's been dating Alex for like two months now. The fact of the matter is, knowing how to turn a root into a fraction can be important when differentiating and integrating. If these are both the same thing, you'll need to be able to change them in both directions. So turning back from a root to a fraction, your first step is to keep the power at the top of the fraction. That's the n here. Then you're going to take this denominator, whatever number is outside of this root symbol, and put it as the bottom of the fraction. Now, if there's a square root, there will not be a number out here. In that case, you have to make the denominator 2. Your third step is to stop thinking about Brook and stay with me here. Your final step is to cancel out the root sign altogether and you get back to your fractional form. Enough mumbo jumbo, let's put it into practice. Here we've got the stuff of nightmares, the sixth root of x to the power of 5, but there's really nothing to be afraid of except earthquakes. If we want to change that to an x to the power of fraction, the first step is we keep the power and put it on the top of the fraction. That's this 5 here. Second, we put this root number, the one outside, at the bottom of the fraction. So the 6 has moved in here. Then we get rid of the root symbol altogether because this is a strictly no rooting zone. And that would be your final answer, unless you want to fail. Let's look at the exception, what to do in the case of square roots. Here we've got the square root of x to the power of 6. So again, following the steps like an obedient robot, we've got 6 as the top of the fraction. Then we put whatever's out here at the bottom. But because you're some sort of child genius, you'll remember that if there's no root number, the denominator is 2. So we put a 2 down there. And finally, we get rid of the root symbol. This is and always will be a no rooting zone. This isn't sex ed class. So our answer is x to the power of 6 over 2. And if you're good, which you are because you're watching this video and remembered to put the bins out last week, you'll know that 6 over 2 simplifies down to 3. Your final answer would be x to the power of 3. 
In summary, here's what you need to know from this video, for those who've been asleep all this time and have conveniently woken up at the perfect moment. The first thing you need to know is that roots and powers are the same as fractional powers. We have three steps for changing from a fraction to a root. Draw the root sign like it's art class. Put the Dungeons and Dragons denominator outside. Keep the Nicholas Cage numerator as a power. We also have three steps for going back from a root to a fraction. Keep the power as the top of the fraction. Put the number outside the root as the bottom of the fraction. Remember, if there is no number, you automatically make it a 2. Get rid of the root sign. To see some life-changing examples of how this comes up in your exam, keep working through the playlist. Do it!